Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make technology simple. And today, we're deep diving into the Google Pixel 3 camera. Yes, I've had this phone for about a month now. I did my previous video, it will be linked up here in the cards. If you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out, some tips and tricks about the Google Pixel 3. But today, I want to really address the camera. Okay, everybody smile. Okay, let's get into it. So of course the Google Pixel 3 doesn't have two cameras on the back as is popular with some other models, but it does have this really cool digital zoom. Press the magnifying glass and it brings up this little slider. Slide anywhere and stop anywhere along this point and you can snap a picture. Now typically with a digital zoom you do have some quality loss, but I find that the Google Pixel does make up for it. And even when you zoom all the way in, it does actually sharpen that picture. So it does a pretty good job using that. And in fact, I actually landed up using that feature much more than I thought. Okay, top left, you've got your timer, and this is what allows you to give you a little countdown time delay. Press the three seconds, press the snap button, three, two, one, and the photo is taken. Okay, cool to have in case you want that facility. But let's go to the next one, which is the motion. It's got motion off, motion auto, and motion on. Now you'll use this feature extensively. This is amazing. Leave it on motion on. And essentially what it does, it allows you to pick something called top shot. So let's just say I've got this little dude and he's um, trying to take a group photo. He's not facing forward and he's moving around a lot. When I take a picture, what it will do is it will snap a picture a little bit before and a little bit after the effect, allowing me to choose the optimal images. So go to the three little dots. I say select my shot. And there it is, a little timeline, and it's even got three little dots above where it thinks is the best shot. So think of things like taking pictures with your kids, um, eyes open, eyes closed situations, somebody's not facing forward. You can now have good opportunity to play with Top Shot is amazing. In order to get a good image, you need to have good lights. By default, there's an option that will automatically try to work out the light composition, but you can actually manually go and change that. So if you're in fluorescent room, you can change that. If you're outside in the sun, you can change that. Most people will simply leave it to auto and that's also cool. And then of course you've got the flash option, auto, off, etc. Keeping on the theme of light, wherever you select in the photo, of course you can play with the exposure as well and choose the focus points wherever you touch. So that's normal as per 99% of cameras that are out there. On the left side, you got something called portrait mode. And in fact, actually, that's pretty useful too. So if you're taking a picture of someone, there's lots of activity in the background, line them up, go into portrait mode, snap on the focus mode, step on their face, and it will actually make sure that they're in focus regardless of what's happening in the background. Panorama works like normal panorama. Let's go into the more setting options. Right, lots of options to play with here on the Google Pixel 3. Let's start with slow-mo. It's quite a nice feature to have and a lot of people have been loving this. There's two speeds to choose from. You can simply select it on the bottom left as I'm doing now. Now, let's actually cause my fidget spinner to actually do this. So, press record and let's spin that spinner. So, that is what it looks like through the eyes of the camera. And you can see a little bit behind the camera how it's looking. Okay, let's stop that video. And now on playback, that button on the side and you can see it's got two little kind of markers this is where the slow motion will actually start so this is what it looks like on the phone and this is what it looks like when you save the file and you can use it on social media for example okay let's move on and i'm going to basically change the speed now to an even slower speed and let's repeat the same exercise so there's me spinning the fidget spinner on a normal speed let's see what that looks like I always get a kick out of that Ooh, slow down sound. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's hit that night site, which has got lots and lots of attention online. I'm sure you've seen lots and lots of videos. So let me switch off some lights in the studio here. So you can see it's absolutely pitch black and I'm gonna snap a picture using night sight mode. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So the first thing you've got to hold really, really still as it snaps a whole bunch of photos, different exposures and overlays them together to get you the best image. And there is what it looks like. Now, just to show you the difference, I'm going to snap a photo with the Samsung S9 Plus. You see on camera, it looks pretty cool, looks pretty decent. And remember, the room is pitch black. You can't even see the picture or what I'm taking a picture of. Let's snap a picture of that. And now let me show you to you side by side comparison. 
So on the left side, you got the Pixel 3, on the right, the S9 Plus, and you can see the difference quite clearly in the images. The Pixel 3 is sharper, looks nicer, and it actually is a difference between being able to capture the shot and use it versus not being able to take the shot at all. Right, next up, let's look at something called lens, which is a little bit misunderstood. So essentially what lens does is that if you take a picture of anything, you can enable the lens, and if you touch on the object, it will try to recognize what the object is, as it's done right here. Where lens really shines is when it comes to products. So here's a product, it simply scans the barcode. Let's do it quickly. Ta -da. There we go, puts a little dot in there, tap that dot, and there it is. That's the product, that's the item. So when you use it on products, when you use it on things like landmarks and famous pictures, it will automatically give you information that you need about it. From the serious stuff to the playground we go. So in your settings, click on playground and here you can bring in some augmented reality characters straight into the scene that you happen to be doing. Um, kids absolutely love this and they have a lot of fun playing with these characters. Let's move Iron Man out the way. The one I want to show you is this thing called the text. So play with that. Go into text, type something. So for example, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. As an example, I mean, this would be something somebody else would type, right? Now, let me show you what that looks like. Now, it actually doesn't just keep it on the screen, but it actually marries it up to the object, brings it bigger, smaller, and understands scale. Now, this is pretty cool as well, and you can have a lot of fun with it, and it's actually got some practical usages for this as well. Like, for example, telling you not to forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new here, or give the video a thumbs up if you thought it was pretty cool. Check out some of these other cool videos, and I'll see you on the next episode, because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.